Hey, welcome construction management students. In this video, we're going to look at wood structural shear walls and hold downs. Understand what they are, uh, very briefly, just a quick overview of what they are, and understand how they're shown in, in blueprints and drawings, and then the construction um, estimating takeoff for that element. Okay, here's a floor plan of the roof, the roof framing plan of a multi uh, family housing project in Santa Monica. Uh, the roof framing plan, this is the, the structure that supports the roof. So we're looking at the top floor of the building where the apartments are. And I see here a structural drawing. It's very complicated, a lot of markings, a lot of notes. Uh, I chose this sheet though because it's a lot less busy than floors below. If I click over here, for example, we'll see there's even more stuff um, and that's because of the, the style of framing, the, the wood framing, the more load that's transferring through the building means that the, the load is the highest at the bottom floor, which means there's a lot more structural elements. So the roof, a little bit of a cleaner drawing to look at and try to understand. So this question is about that we're going to answer is related to wood shear walls. So what is a shear wall? Let me show you just a quick Google search. Um, a shear wall itself is a lateral force resisting system in the structural design of the building. So you can have a concrete shear wall, um, you can have braced frames of structural steel as a lateral force resisting element. Uh, there's a handful of different structural elements that you can have to resist lateral load. The lateral load is either earthquake or wind load. And this job is in Los Angeles, so there's obviously seismic consideration here in California. Um, this picture on the right is an apartment building, similar to the one that we're talking about. And you see shear walls right here, and here, and here. It just looks like plywood uh, with some, some kind of element going through the ends here. You can kind of see a stud or something. Um, but that plywood is the shear wall. If you look at these other pictures here, a uh, little more excessive amounts of plywood. Um, but compare these plywood locations to this location right here where you just see the, the, the vertical studs. There's no plywood over it because the wall assembly for the exterior is most likely stucco or a, a wood siding product, uh, like a prefabricated um, cement board type of uh, exterior. Those wall assemblies don't require plywood in the assembly. You just need the studs and you know, they're lath and stucco. There's different uh, properties that make up that wall. It's not plywood everywhere. It's not like a doghouse with plywood everywhere. So the wood, the shear walls, are these plywood locations. So you have it in all residential buildings, uh, again, for lateral load, either it's wind in most of the country and uh, loads on the, the West Coast predominantly. So back to our drawings and our blueprints, we can identify where the shear walls are by first just going to the notes. If, if you've never looked at a structural drawing for wood framing, don't, you can't really look at this and try to decipher what's what. You see a bunch of letters and shapes and symbols and things. Go straight up to the to the notes to get started. The first thing I see here is ATS hold downs. Okay, uh, what are ATS hold downs? Well, the first thing I would do is uh, Google it, right? Google it, ATS hold down. Anchor tie down system for shear wall overturning. Awesome. Okay, so if you're new to this building material. You can, just by Googling the name, understand that the ATS hold down is an element that's part of the shear wall. They work together, and it's the rod right here. So when the wall, this, is, this drawing shows the wall being loaded, right? It's bending as if it's under an earthquake load. The shear wall transfers the shear, the load, to these rods. These rods are required to transfer the tension and compression loads down to the, the floors beneath. You can see them again here. Okay, so, and they look like this. Rods going through the floor plate and then shear, uh, a wood panel will cover it up. Great, so we know what those are. That makes sense. Okay, so ATS hold down schedule. Well, we can probably look at these shapes and these letter call outs and probably expect that there's a shear wall between them. So J here, J six foot length and then a triangle for the number three. So we know J is 
whatever the CTDS22. It's a Simpson product. Simpson is a manufacturer of the ATS hold down system. You can, of course, look that up if you're curious what the difference is between these, those different um, call outs. It's just a different size diameter rod with a different capacity uh, based on the location and the length of shear wall. Okay, so we know what those hold downs are. We saw this three, six foot length, three with a, di a triangle. Uh, I suspect it's a shear wall, but let's keep looking at the notes to understand it. There you go, triangle is shear wall. The length denotes the limit of the shear wall. Plywood can be placed on either side of the wall. So we know that that is the length of the shear wall. That's the, the length of plywood that you need between those uh, hold downs or, on, or you know, on top of those hold downs, essentially. So you can keep reading these notes if you'd like to understand how the, how the floor is framed. We'll look at it in another video and discuss it further. But for now, we now know the shear walls, the shear walls and hold downs that complement one another. We know the hold down mark numbers A through M and the different model of rod that's being used for that ATS hold down. We know a triangle represents a shear wall. It says C shear wall schedule. And if I look at the triangles, I see number three, number four, number four, number two. Okay, so I, I recognize that there are multiple types of shear walls on this project. I'm in this drawing, scanning up and down, left and right. I don't see a shear wall schedule here in this drawing. So let's look to the floors beneath, the floors below. Maybe it will be shown on a different floor plan. This is the fourth floor framing plan. So it's the framing supporting the fourth floor. I see the hold down schedule again. I see similar plan notes here. I don't see a schedule. Go to the next floor down is the second floor, the third floor framing plan. Again, the drawing is becoming more complicated, more convoluted, which is what we'd expect. Hold down schedule, framing notes, no shear wall schedule. Next floor down is the second floor framing plan. Again, more complicated. I see more notes up here. Uh, concrete deck notes. So this is related to the concrete deck, the uh, concrete area that's on this floor, uh, which is alongside the, the wood framing. Still no shear wall schedule. Okay, next I would then go to the, the drawings, um, table of contents, really. So we go to the general sheet. Uh, G10, and I see under structure, structural drawings, um, details, floor plans, okay, ATS post column layout, no, I don't think it's going to be that, structural details, if you're hesitant, I would just open the drawing and make sure, structural details, third floor framing, fourth floor, we've checked all of these, uh, typical wood details, ATS hold down details, that might show something. Okay, so let's go to the wood details. S13. What do you know, shear wall schedule. Perfect, right in the middle of our, uh, our drawing. So we found the shear wall schedule, and now we see mark numbers two through 11, all of them are 1537th, I'm sorry, 1532nd struck, struck one plywood. So struck, that's the uh, the rating of the plywood, 1532nd is essentially half an inch. So it's, uh, but it's just the naming convention of plywood. There's half inch thick plywood, there's three quarter inch thick plywood. So you would call that just half inch plywood. Uh, if you Google struck structural one plywood, you can even look at, um, like the pricing at Home Depot. If you're curious what this is, it looks like you, you walk by the stuff at Home Depot all the time. It's just plywood, but it's uh, it has a certain rating to it that's used for structural purposes. There's all sorts of different types of, of plywood out there. Um, but you care about this, the rating. You see these stamps on plywood, and that's how you check in the field if, you, if they're using the right plywood. So you see struck one right there. And it gives you different uh, specifications about how the plywood performs in case you need to inspect it in the field. So, struck one plywood, that's the type of plywood used for the shear wall. 
it tells you if you need it on two sides of the wall. No, remember back to um, this note, it says plywood can be placed on either side of the wall. So that applies to one-sided shear walls. Uh, going back to our shear wall schedule, two sides, so that, that note applies to only two through eight, nine, 10, and 11, you have plywood on both sides. And see 13, it's a note 13 down below, where plywood is applied on both sides of shear wall, panel joist shall be offset to fall on different framing members. Just an, uh, a note on how the plywood is oriented on the, the studs. Blocked, all these other things, blocked, I'm not going to talk about blocked. Uh, fasteners, these are the nails, so this is the nail size. The spacing of the nails and the boundary around the perimeter. Um, the, the boundary of the panel, I'm sorry, the panel itself, a, a sheer wall, um, spans multiple floors. So on uh, sheet 10 if we look at this, this one shear wall we identified earlier today, six foot shear wall. So that shear wall is six foot wide, but the height spans all these floors. If we look at that location all the way down the building, you'll see that this continues all the way down. That shear wall itself is, is spans all height. It's gonna be multiple pieces of plywood. So in the schedule, it tells you around that entire length of wall, the nail spacing uh, is six inches. The edge is six inches around each piece of plywood also. And then in the field, that means just spacing of the plywood to the, the joist within the sheet of plywood. It's a little bit larger spacing. It doesn't really matter. You can probably scan over this, these notes just if you're curious. Let's talk about where, how, how to space out the nails throughout the piece of plywood. And then more information about uh, what the, how you're connecting uh, different elements to it. Um, you can, of course, read, pause the video and read this if you're curious about more details on a typical shear wall. Um, but that's, that's how we know what we're dealing with. When we're looking at RS means online, we want to understand what the shear wall is that we're working with. Um, and because it may be a factor in the pricing. It might be pricing for different size pieces of plywood or different nail spacing. Um, I'll get there in just a moment. Uh, S14 was another uh, detail, it was a sheet that talked about uh, ATS hold downs. So I opened these up just so we can quickly uh, look over them. So it matches some of the stuff we Googled already, the images do. You can of course look at the details. Uh, and here's a nice picture that shows the shear wall uh, adjacent to other typical framing elements. So like I was saying, uh, if this is six feet in width, the height of the shear wall is from this bottom floor all the way up to the top floor. So the shear wall is going to be six foot wide by about 40 feet tall, made up of multiple pieces of plywood. Uh, if you're doing a takeoff of this element, um, you want to just simply, you know, look at the six feet plus eight foot six plus five feet. So I would probably make a table and um, organize a table by shear wall type and then the length of shear wall and the height of shear wall for each. But if you're looking at just this floor, say it's just the, the roof framing, um, I would just make a table of the different shear wall types in the length and only count the height of this floor, call it 10 feet, or uh, just for to make it easy. Quickly, I'm gonna pull up RS means online. This is under, um, let's see, woods, woods, plastics, and composites, structural panels, that's probably it. Composite shear wall panels, nice. Shear wall panels, anchor bolts on concrete, above on wood floor framing add, okay. It's on concrete, it's on the podium deck. So here we go. Um, we only have up to 24 inches wide, so two feet wide. So I'd probably want to select two of these elements, probably this first one and the second one, this 12 inch and the 24 inch to make up a three foot length. 